Okay, okay. cool. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to perform a corporate gown. I have been everything from a size 10 to an 18 plus, and I share that because I want you to know that I know what it's like to invest in clothes and struggle to let go of them. You know, I had someone tell me they liked it too. You know, you put money on a hanger and you hang it in your closet and then you just like sit there. Right? But it's hard. We have attachments to our clothes, we have memories, we have places we've gone. And I remember standing in front of my closet and nothing fit. I was looking, literally, I was looking at all my clothes and I was like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? And I had this awful pit in my stomach and I thought, what happened? Like, my body is betraying me because I'm doing all this stuff, right? We're exercising, we're eating right, and it's menopause. Um, at least for me it was, right? And so I went out and I got myself a pair of pants and went to Target. I made a deal with myself. I said, I'm going to get one pair of pants. That's it. Nothing more because I don't want to go into that next size, right? We're so attached to the number on the on the clothes, but something happened. Like I felt so much better when I put on something that fit properly, right? I could, I could mix and match it with other tops. I didn't have to worry about my pants digging into me. And so I just want you to know that, okay, I've been there. I've been everything from a size 10 to an 18 plus, and I say 18 plus because I stopped counting. I've also worked with clients of all different sizes, right? I mean, look, we stopped, and, and I love Chico's. I used to anyways, I still kind of do, because they have a completely different number system, so right. they're not attached to yes. whatever the number is, right? But I work with clients from zero to 22 plus, and I will tell you, it doesn't matter what size you are, we always want to be one size smaller, or two size smaller, or we always are on this journey to lose weight, right? The 10 wants to be the 12, the 12 wants to be the 10, the 20 wants to be the 18, and I really believe this. I was talking to some women at my table. How you show up matters, and not just for yourself, but how others interact with you, right? I've had lots and lots of examples over the years of how it's really transformed people's lives when they go from wearing just athleisure wear to real clothes. So first impression matters. Years ago, it used to be you had like 60 seconds to make a first impression. I don't know about you. Have you ever been somewhere where you can just literally see someone kind of looking you up and down? Okay, that's happened to me. And the reality is with our phones, with chat, you know, all the stuff we have now, chat, GPT, we have like five seconds before someone makes a decision about you, whether or not potentially they want to work together or be your friend or interact with you. So this is a study that was done years ago. I can rattle off lots of studies, but I want you to see, it's really simple. They took men and they grouped them in two different groups. One, they put in sweats and one, they put in suits. And the group that was in sweats did potentially about $680,000 in sales, which is okay. But the men in suits did almost three times as much. And the thing that really got me was the men in sweats deferred to the men in suits. They had trouble making decisions. Whereas the men in suits could think outside the box, make all sorts of great decisions, and think like a CEO. So it, it had, what they were wearing had everything to do with how they were interacting with people and the decisions they were making. So this is my, it's, a, it's part of a review, but it's, it's really the no legging challenge. And sometimes when I work with clients, I tell them, you know, look, we all got, well, I wouldn't say we all, a lot of people got stuff wearing athleisure wear over the last couple of years, right? Some of us still do. But when I work with someone, I say, I want you to get up and get dressed in real clothes, even though you have nowhere to go, no meetings, nothing. It's the no legging challenge. And I make them do it for two days. I don't make them, I ask them. And here's what happens every single time. They always are so excited. They call me, they text, oh my gosh, I got so much done. I felt so much more energetic. It was so fun. And they text me, I just had a client text me a video this morning. Look at my outfit, I feel so great, you know? <laughs> It's simple. It has everything to do with how you're showing up for yourself and filling your own cup. And so this woman likes, uh, anybody else here like to wear all black all the time? Okay, so she wears all black. She was doing a branding shoot, and I said, okay, let's just try a little bit of color, right? We found a green sweater jacket, and we found a blue top, and she was like, oh my gosh, this was so much fun. Like, I can do this, but we get stuck. And so this is how I help them get unstuck. So when I say how you show up matters, I, I really try to tie it to how, how does it relate to what you're doing? So what's it costing you? Whether you're in corporate or whether you're a solopreneur or an entrepreneur, every time you walk out the door and you're not showing up as your best self, it has an effect on you, right? And so it could be costing you one client a month. What does that client cost you? Is it a couple hundred dollars? Is it a thousand dollars? Is it 10,000? So what does that look like for you? Maybe it's you're not getting picked to be um, 
on projects for leadership. Maybe you're missing out on the promotion. Maybe you look just like everybody else on the team, so no one sees your outstanding work, and it all can go back to how you're showing up. So, I was talking at the table with the, the fabulous business women. We used to have rules, right? We knew what we were gonna wear to the office. We knew what we wore when we got home. We kinda knew what our weekend wear was, and it was all very separate. And now it's like, what do I wear? We don't know what the rules are. So I'm, I'm kinda going to the office a couple days a week. I'm kinda working from home. I, people don't know what they're supposed to wear anymore, and they're really struggling. And I hear from corporations, small firms, all the time, employees are showing up in like Uggs and leggings, and I don't know what to tell them. Management is saying, you know, productivity is all <coughs> so low, and people just look like they rolled out of bed and they're showing up. And yeah. management doesn't want to say anything, but maybe the staff members don't know that that's not what they're supposed to wear, right? No one's saying anything, so this must be good. So this is how I share that it really shows up in every part of our life, whether you work in a corporation and, and you're a partner, team partner, or whether you're an entrepreneur, it shows up in your productivity, your decision making, so many things, your sales, your growth, all the things that are important. And I started some of these because I went to this HR conference yesterday and this woman who used to work for, she's a global exec in HR, she used to work for Yeti. She said that collaboration is key. It's key for an organization to thrive. Collaboration and productivity. And right now, like I said, productivity levels are at all time low. Companies are struggling with how to get their staff members to collaborate because we're working from home, we're not coming into the office, people are showing up on Zoom and they're not putting the screens on because they don't want to get ready. They're just, you know, I, I don't have time to get ready. So they're really struggling. And so how you show up and present yourself has everything to do with all of these things, communication, productivity, growth, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're in a corporate environment. So our biggest thing is we say, we're not sure how, lack of time and lack of money. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. And I really believe that it fits into these three categories, which is being authentic, on brand, and confident. And I have to tell you a quick story. I've known Tony, she's here, she's a dear friend. Years ago, she helped me come up with this, it's the ABCs of style, and I'm like, oh, that's great. And so it just, it translates across everything, entrepreneur, corporate, and it works. So being authentic is about getting clients or being able to collaborate with coworkers, right? Because when you show up authentically, it changes everything. Uh, years ago, I went to an event, it was actually with Tony, and this woman who was a stylist got up on stage and she said, if you want to be a speaker, you have to wear a dress, heels, and nylons. And I was like, yeah, there's no way in hell. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. But that's because that's not authentic to me, right? I'm much more fun and sassy, and I like to wear jeans and you know high heels or maybe some flats. So you have to figure out what that looks like for you. What do you love? I have some clients that love to wear skirts, some that love dresses, some that only like to wear pants. You have to figure out what that looks like for you, and you have to try things, right? I have clients, it's frustrating to shop, so everyone wants to keep wearing the same thing because it's comfortable and it works, but you have to be willing to try new things to see if that works for you. Now, start with basics. And what's your personality, right? I had a lady in Atlanta say that pre-pandemic she used to wear black, her hair was straightened, and then as time went on, she started to wear pink lipstick, she let her hair go natural, and she started to wear pink pumps. And her base, her followers grew. And it's because she was showing up more authentically, right? It made a difference in her energy and how she was showing up. <coughs> Everyone's different. Figure out what works for you. You don't have to fit in a box. I met a woman at a networking event. She's an energy healer. She does like chakras or something. Sorry, that's not my thing, but that's what she does. And she came and she looked like this boho casual gal. And it was great because she was showing up as who she was and what she did. And it was like, awesome, go for it. So figure out what that looks like for you. And I'm all about, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Just figure out what works for you. And I believe that if you can take 10 pieces, and they're the right pieces, they're all the right color scheme, they go together, you can create endless outfits. 40, 50, 60, this is just an example. You can start with basics, a button down, I love button down, some people don't, a shirt, print, color. I like print because it allows you to wear, different, like she's wearing a beautiful scarf, you can wear blues, greens, yellows, it'll match with everything, right? It allows you to create a lot more outfits. It gives you some versatility. It's three tops, three bottoms, and three layering pieces. And it, you can pick any bottom. Like I said, if you're a jeans gal, find the jeans, but maybe a dark wash because they look more professional. Um, if you like skirts, then pick the skirt. 
just find something that works for you and your body and what you're comfortable with. And then this is add some jewelry and accessories. I had a client who liked to wear all black. She didn't want to spend a lot of money on clothes. So we found some new jewelry for her. And people were like, oh, you look so cute. You're looking great today. All she changed was her jewelry. It was a different focal point, right? We are who, like, so how do I say this? So does anybody have like a body part you're not comfortable with? Like you're, you don't like your arms, you don't, you're like, you don't like your brows, yes. maybe your tush. When was the last time you went somewhere and you went to meet your girlfriend and you said, oh, her arms are looking pretty bad. Is that <laughs> <laughs> no, you would never do that, right? But we think when we walk into a room, that's what everybody's looking at. It's all about a focal point. People are looking at your face, right? They're looking at whatever focal point you give them. So give them a focal point. No one cares about your arms. No one cares about your chest. No one cares about your tush. It's just, it's all in your head, I promise. <laughs> and if there is somebody, you don't want to be friends with them. <laughs> Looks. I saw this ad and they said 10 pieces, 10 looks. And I was like, yeah, no, I can come up with a lot more looks. It's basically two tops, two bottoms, four layering pieces, and a dress. And I created 30 different outfits. And these are all neutrals. But you could throw in a pop color. You know, it's all about finding pieces that work for you and what you're comfortable with. So um, I, I went to this dinner a couple months ago and it was a lot of women in corporate, C suite execs, CFOs, CMOs, all, you know, all these big fancy titles. But this woman said, I I always wear black. I have these presentations that I do for men and women and in her corporate environment. She said, I have all these fun clothes in my closet, lots of color, but I never wear them. Should I, what should I do? I said, wear the color. Well, but then I'll stand out. I'm like, yes, then you will stand out. <laughs> She's like, but you know, I, I'm not sure about that. I said, so you go to a conference and you sit all day and you hear people and they do slides and don't you want to be the one that they remember? Remember that gal who had that awesome outfit on and she gave that great presentation? Instead of just being like everybody else, what if you were the one that they remember? And she was like, oh, I never thought about it that way, right? So be the one that they remember, okay? And that's what being authentic is about. So the lead frog effect is basically, this works in the corporate or as an entrepreneur. If you put three people together, we want to work with the expert and we determine who the expert is based on how they're showing. So are you dressing and representing yourself as the expert in your field, right? I met a financial advisor, this was years and years ago, we were at a networking event, and she said, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have time for ne these networking events. And, and I looked at what she was wearing, she was wearing this white jacket and a blouse, and the jacket had an ink mark on it and a hole in the pocket, mm -hmm. and then there was a stain on her shirt. Now look, <laughs> I get it, I have kids, you know, some days you're just hairy and <laughs> trying to get out the door. But as a financial advisor, all I could think was, she should like lose money. Like she should look perfect. Because I'm gonna, if I'm gonna give her my money to take care of, I wanna know that she's paying attention to those details, right? So in my mind, she really wasn't showing up as the expert in her field. And I would never refer her because she just didn't look the part, right? So what does that look like for you? And do you look like the expert when you walk out the door? Would someone pick you for the team, for leadership, for management? And are you, are you leapfrogging or is someone leapfrogging over you? So this is the second point, right? Time. We don't have time. We're always busy. I get it. I have two boys. They're grown now. But there, there were days when I was like, it took me everything just to get the door and not be late, right? So we spend 14 to 16 minutes trying to figure out what to wear. Not actually getting dressed. Just trying to figure out what to wear. So imagine if you took one day and spent 10, 15 minutes, because over the course of a week, that's over an hour, right? Yes. So if you spent 10 minutes one day and planned what you were going to wear for the week, you could get an hour, potentially more back in your day. Anybody want more time in their day? Yes. With their week, whatever? Like, what would you do with the extra hour, right? It makes a big difference. <laughs> and it makes it much easier when you know you have clothes in your closet that fit. And you like what's in your closet. So being on brand is about being unforgettable. So I always hear people, when they talk about branding and messaging, it's what people say about you when you leave the room, right? You all have something to say. Sometimes people say, oh, your glasses are bad. Oh, I love your jewelry, whatever it is. You want people to talk about you after you've left the room. So here's what happens. When you show up on brand, if you're an entrepreneur, it's more likely that people, you're going to have better brand awareness. People are going to think of you. You're going to be top of mind. Your business will grow. You'll have more customers. When you're in office, and, and or if you're in leadership, 
it makes it really great when you clarify what those, we were talking earlier, like no one knows what the rules are. Clarify what the rules are. We want to know if we're not showing up properly, right? And when you do that, you're going to have greater impact, greater engagement, and greater productivity, which is the leader or in management, or even in, if you're working in corporate, you want all those things, right? It's just going to be better for everybody. So how do you show up on brand? How do you want to stand out? Maybe you're happy wearing all black which is great, I get that. We, we were told at some point that black is great because it goes with everything. But here's the thing, not everybody looks great with black. Sometimes it brings out the dark circles under our eyes. Sometimes it makes your skin look sallow. And here's the other thing, you blend in with everybody else. It's really hard to remember you if you look like everybody else. So throw some color in. If you like the black top, then maybe a print pant or a fun color or a fun shoe. I have these glasses. I have clients that say, well, I want to wear my brand colors. Great, let's find some things in your brand colors. I have others that say, oh my God, I hate my brand colors. I wish I could change them. Wear what you love, whether it's red, green, blue. If you have blue eyes, try some reds. If you have dark hair, try purple. You know, there's all different things that you can try. Figure out what that looks like for you. I met this, I spoke to a group of lawyers in Dallas and there was this woman, everybody crowded around her when she walked in the room. And I was like, what's going on with this woman? <laughs> well, she wears these pins. She has a collection of over two or 300 of them, and so everybody wanted to know what pin she was wearing. Like, that's great for engagement. Not just amongst her other lawyer friends, but when she goes to a conference, when she goes to work with clients, when she's meeting with other professionals, everybody wants to know what the pin is. Like, how fun is that? Doesn't cost her a lot of money, but that's her brand. That's how people remember her. And then, what do you want to be, how do you want to be thought of? Um, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is, I recently worked with a woman. She, so two things. There was a, I read this book called Hughes. It's by Vanessa Van Edwards. And there was this gentleman who got a new job. He washed all his clothes. Next day he goes out to start his new job and he realizes the sleeves on his shirts have shrunk. Mm -hmm. And so he pushed up his sleeves because he didn't want anybody to know that his clothes had shrunk, right? Mm -hmm. He went to work. And what he found was people thought he was the go-getter. He was gonna get the job done. Because he rolled in his sleeves. So he started getting these bigger jobs, bigger leadership roles, working with management, C suite execs, and all of a sudden he found he's taking more risk. He's getting more jobs, he's having more confidence. And he just he exponentially grew. All because he rolled up his sleeves, right? And so how do you want to be thought of? That he didn't mean to do that, but that's how people thought of him. I recently worked with a gal, she, she was in media, she worked with a public official, she used to wear dresses and high heels, now she's an entrepreneur. We're going through her closet, we're cleaning out some of the dresses, she must have had 40 dresses, easy. She's like, I don't wanna be that person anymore. I'm like, okay, you don't have to be that person. You also don't have to get rid of all 40 dresses, but let's create a whole new look for you because the reality is, we go through seasons in our life, right? I'm not the same person I was two years ago, or five years ago, or 10 years ago. But in our closet, and you don't have to raise your hand, but does anybody have things that you had for five years, 10 years, pre-baby, 20, that you're not touching, you're not wearing? But we hang on to them, right? Because they still fit. Okay, here's the thing. They don't necessarily fit who you are anymore. Okay, so yes, they might fit literally, but is it who you are? Is it who you want to be? Is it how you want to show up? Right? But we're like, oh, but it still fits, so I want to hang on to it. You don't have to. You can step into this new season, whatever that looks like. And when you do that, when you let go of what's not working for you, it allows you to step into that new season and figure out who you want to be and how you want to show up. So, how do you want to stand out? It could be all sorts of things. It could be color. It could be classic. Uh, I, you know, I have a friend, Tony. She used to wear black, white, and red. That's it for years. And then suddenly she decided she wore pink and green and something else. So that again changes over time. Now, here's the last piece that's, I think, the most important is confidence. When you're confident, people want to be near that energy. They want to be near you. They want to have more of you. They want to know what you're doing. People buy confidence, okay? It's a game changer. When you have confidence, this kind of goes back to the story I told about the gentleman who rolled up his sleeves. You are more likely to take risks. You're more likely to have a better self-image. You're more likely to have better self-confidence in yourself. Go after your goals and think more highly of yourself, right? All of those things kind of happen, it's like this circle. When you're authentic on brand and confident, it all kind of starts to roll, snowball. So here's the trick. It's really easy, but it's also very hard. 
having confidence is finding clothes that fit the body you have now. Not the one you had, not the one you're gonna have, because you know, we're all on a weight loss journey, and not the one you want you have. Like it's just it's crazy to me, but it when you have clothes that fit the body you have now, it makes it really easy to get dressed in the morning because you know everything fits. I don't know about you, but I work with a lot of clients and I've done this myself. You stand in front of the closet, you're like, okay, that won't work. I don't like that. <laughs> you know, or you do the dance, you put something on and you do this because you're trying to like will it work, will it fit? It's kind of scratchy, I'm not really sure, right? Nope. It's okay. I hear this all the time too. Well, I can't wear that because I'm not a size, whatever. Uh, that's not gonna work for me because in our head we tell ourselves that will work. I worked with a client who was size 22, she needed new pants, jeans. We went to look for something and I pulled petite and skinny. She said, I'm not petite, I'm not skinny. I said, okay, petite is anyone who's five three or under and you have shorter legs, shorter arms, maybe a shorter waist. You're petite, has nothing to do with your weight. And skinny is just a style, right? So of course we tried on the pants and they fit perfectly. But in her head, she had all the stuff that she was telling herself, right? So style is not a size or an inference scale. It's just you deciding that you're worth it and spending time to figure out what that looks like. And you have to stop waiting. So who here has said, I'm gonna wait to buy that until I lose the 10 pounds, the five pounds. I'm not gonna wear that until um, or if you're like me at one point in my life, I'm like, I'm gonna buy that, even though it's too small because it's on sale and that'll be my motivation. <laughs> right? right? That's what we do, that's what we tell ourselves. But here's what happens. We are telling ourselves subconsciously that we're not worth it right now. We're all in business, whether we're in corporate, we're entrepreneurs, whether we've been in business for years, you're amazing. But we're telling ourselves we're not worth it. We'll be worth it somehow in the future when we weigh less or are smaller size. How crazy is that? Like, no, you can be worth it right now. And so that's when I'm working with clients. I make them question that, right? I want them to question that belief that they're telling themselves, I, I, not right now, like I'm gonna wait. I don't wanna invest the money. We want people to invest in us, give us promotions, become clients, but we're not really, we really have a challenge with investing in ourselves. And so then it's about deciding that you can believe something else. And then it's about putting it into practice, right? So I'm gonna give, this is a good example. I met with a woman, she's one of my international clients. We did a virtual closet edit. She gained 20, 25 plus pounds during the pandemic. She's a woman in business, nothing fits anymore. She's got these meetings she's going out to and nothing fits. So she wants to buy all these clothes. And I said, okay, well, let's go through what you have. We created like 20, 30 outfits using what she had. She had scarves, you know, we tried some different, putting together different outfits. And then she went out afterwards and she found some little vintage jewelry. She spent a couple dollars. Like she said, I think she said about five pounds maybe. And she said people were calling her stunning and glamorous, her postman, her hairdresser, and nothing changed. She didn't spend a lot of money. She didn't lose a lot of weight. What changed was she decided that she could look good and feel good at the size that she was at and that she was worth investing some time and spending some time to get dressed, put herself together. And she wrote me the most amazing email and it made me cry because it was just that small shift in her that made a huge difference in her life. So it's about making shifts. Instead of I should lose weight, I should go exercise, I should hang on to these clothes in case I lose weight. It's about letting go and shifting and saying, I can let go of those pieces. I can empower another woman. You know, you talked earlier about empowering people, right? When you let go of something, find a women's shelter. There are a number of them in the area. If you want a list, I'll send it to you. There are, there's a woman leaving an abusive relationship, a woman getting out of a divorce, a woman looking for a new job, a woman who has a new job, but she doesn't have the funds to go buy anything, okay? Let go of those pieces. Someone will wear them and love them and look beautiful and feel confident in them, okay? And then find a piece. If you the black pants don't fit, go buy a pair of new ones because it will change your outlook, I tell you. And then think about these things. So these are just really simple rules, whether you're in business for yourself or you work in corporate. I hear from women all the time, I wanna feel powerful. What do I, well, how can I feel powerful? Clean lines, appropriate for the occasion, one focal point. So well-fitted, here's the thing. We, as we get older and gain weight and our body changes, for those of you who are young, you still have time. But <laughs> here's what happens. Things move around, right? And the pants that we always wore suddenly don't fit because we have this, what I call menopause pouch. Yeah. And see? Yeah, exactly. Right? You feel that pain, right? And so we it, it happens and things things move around and yes, you might lose the weight, but it doesn't go back the same way. 
and it takes you like five, ten times mm -hmm. longer. I remember I used to be able to go run five miles and I'd drop a few pounds. I could run 20 miles and like I'd probably gain five pounds. You know, it just it just happens. So my point is we buy things and we make them really big because we're trying to hide. <laughs> and then you end up looking sloppy and messy, and that comes across as not appropriate and unprofessional. When really all you're trying to do is hide, hide your stomach or your chest or whatever, right? So clean lines, well fitted, and well cared for. Kind of going back to the woman that I spoke about earlier, whose clothes were just a hot mess. And I get it, you know, we all have lives, nothing's perfect, but just putting a little bit of time and care because, like, I went to, I told my friend Lindsay, I went to an event and this gentleman showed up and he had really awful BO. <laughs> Okay, you might be brilliant and great, but I'm not with you because I don't want to sit next to you. You know, and, and oh look, I get it, we all have things, but it's just the small things sometimes. <laughs> Project competency, and so that goes back to the clean lines, right? And have a power outfit. I have a couple where you just put it on and you know you're going to kill it that day, you feel amazing. Have a couple of those in your closet because sometimes it can make all the difference in the world. So we're all different body shapes, okay? And then again, as your life changes, you will change. I used to be, you know, hourglass. Now I'm somewhere between an apple and a pear. But here's the thing, you wanna have proportion with your body. No matter what size you are, no matter what shape you are, we think that we're hiding our bodies by buying clothes that are bigger and blousy, but what happens is we end up looking like a blob. And so if you really just do a little side tuck, wear a belt, have some proportion. I, I work with women and their, their tops go way down here past their crotch, okay? That gives your, it just makes you one big circle. Mm -hmm. There's no proportion. And while you might think, oh, but I'll look awful if I put a belt on, you won't. You'll actually give your body some proportion and people will know, like this is my one third and this is my two thirds. If you're taller, it could be opposite. It just depends on what you're comfortable with, but it can really make all the difference in the world, you feeling confident and put together and not schlumpy, right? <clears throat> so now we're gonna talk about doing it without breaking the bank. So here are my easy strategies. I start with 30 minutes a day in the closet because here's what happens. We get in this catch 22. I just worked with a young lawyer in Austin. She had like five black skirts, but she said they don't fit. They're not her style. They're pre-baby. They're old. They're pills. Okay. But she hangs on to them because, well, they kind of still fit. And then she says we need to go buy a new black skirt, but she won't allow herself to buy the new black skirt because she's got the five black skirts in her closet, right? <laughs> so you have to spend 30 minutes a day and the life bill is not working for you. A quick tip is turn the hanger around every time you wear something. And then after 30 days, 60 days, you can see what you're wearing because we tend to wear the same things over and over. And then start to let go of what's not working for you because then it will open you up to the possibility of, oh, I need that. I need to put that on my list. When I go shopping, I'm gonna go shopping for that specific thing, not whatever's on sale, because it's a great buy, okay? Set a budget. We spend money on everyone and everything else. We spend money on our friends, our sisters, our family, our partners, our spouses, our parents, and then when it comes time to buy an $80 bra, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna wait. I'll wait till it's on sale. But it, it, it has so much to do with your outfit, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not just the bra, it's anything. When we need anything, it's like, yeah, I know. But if you have a budget, you're more likely to spend the money. It could be 10 bucks a month, it could be 20, it could be 100, whatever works for you. But when you have that money set aside, you're like, oh yeah, I need this. I can get this now. Email lists, we all have too many, but when you sign up for email lists, they'll send you coupons. If you're gonna buy it, why not buy it on sale? 10%, 15% off, 20 sometimes, free shipping, whatever it is. They'll also, if you start shopping and you forget something in your cart, this just happened to me. Uh, Franco Sardo, it's a shoe company, right? If you're shopping, you put it in your cart, even if you were looking at it and you get sparkle syndrome like me and you go away, they'll send you an email if you're on their list and say, hey, do you still want this? You can get 15% off. Like, yes, please. I'll buy it on sale if I want it anyways, right? I need it. And then mo the most bang for your buck. Think about, can you wear it? If you're gonna buy a top, can you make two new outfits using what you already have? Not, let me buy this because it's on sale and it's a great deal, and then you get it home and it doesn't go with anything. But can I make two new outfits with it and will it work for spring, summer, or fall, winter? Right, because then you know you can use it throughout the year, or at least for part of the year. Like, these black pants, I probably bought them like, I don't know, five years ago, they were probably more than $100, but I wear them at least a quarter of the year. So let's say 20 times in a year, and over the course of four or five years, that's like a buck mm -hmm. a wear, right? So they were more of an investment piece for me, 
But it's better than if I would have, not that I have anything against Target, but sometimes you buy something at Target and it lasts maybe a year. Yeah. And it, you know, you would have been better off buying the yeah. other piece, investing in it. So those are things to think about. And then just know there's no sizing standard. We go into the store, we think we're a size 10, a four, a 12, and then it doesn't fit. And we're like, oh, there's something wrong with me. There's no sizing. I can, I'm right now somewhere between a 14 and a 16, and I could be anything from a 12 to an 18, honestly. Even sometimes within the same store. I just went to J. Crew to try on a pair of pants. There were 14, I couldn't get them past my thighs. Does that ever happen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I tried the 16, and they were kind of snug. I mean, they fit, but they were kind of snug. I'm like, hmm, I lost weight for nothing. I'm still wearing the same <laughs> darn size, right? So just know there's no sizing standard. Clothes now are made in China, Philippines, Taiwan, India, I mean, all kinds of places, and they all have a different sizing standard. Mm -hmm. It's not you, it's the clothes. And then this just goes back to, when you let go of them, just find your place. There is someone who will wear them, because we're only wearing probably about a third of what we have in our closet. Mm -hmm. And then, this is the last one, up-leveling your style can be the one thing that changes everything. It changes your confidence, it changes how people reach out to you, how they react to you, how they treat you, how they promote you, all of those things. And if, I hope this aligns with you, if you these are, I know I talk really fast and I go through a lot of information. So if you want the takeaways, which is basically an overview of what this was, you can text that number. It will ask you for a link and then you actually have to click on the link and give your email and your name and then you'll get an email that will allow you to download the takeaways. But I really appreciate you having me. If you have questions, that's great. I think we have time. If not, that's okay. And um, thank you so much. Again, by anything to wait till I lose right. weight. Yes. Went to uh, he asked the motivation me out on the piece. Right. <laughs> so I found a man. People, right. you know, I, I stopped doing that, and I love it. And I think so many women need this. I'm, I'm sitting here going, I want to work with her. <laughs> <laughs> I want her to train me yeah. because what I, what I, what I want all women, and especially if you're 50 and over, I know you ladies. <laughs> I don't, don't give up. Right. You know, I did a fashion show just telling somebody in here at a senior place. It was for women, fifty and up. What well, men too? And you would have you would have no idea what it did to those sure. women. Nobody had ever asked them to do anything like right. that before. Sure. And so, you know, where are the colors? I I'm an artist, so I'm surprised I have on matching earrings. <laughs> and if you said anything, I'll say, oh, thank you. And then the students would say to me, oh, Ms. Moore, you have on mixed match. You kidding. <laughs> so I just want to say, I am so glad. Real quickly, just want to say this. I was in a dark place when I came here this morning and last night. I we, um, had some bad news. They found my nephew. He had been murdered. And when I was, I was going to come in a way, but I was going to wear this black skirt. I was going to wear my black jacket. I said, no, no, I'm not. Do I look like I'm in mourning? No, I'm not. I, I, I love him, but I had to come. And you're right. Sometimes just dress up in a way. Yep. So thank you so much. Thank you. I, really I appreciate, appreciate that. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's your power out. Oh. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, we all need that, you know? I put on something yesterday morning. It was a blue shirt and jeans and a, and a blazer. And I started working, and I was doing that dance, right? I was just futzing with it, and it didn't work. So I went, and I changed, and I put the top. This is the other thing we do, right? We, we, hang, we take off the top or the pants, whatever, and we put it back in the closet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it needs to go in a basket, a bin, to give away. So that's what I did. I actually just took out some clothes. There was a, ba a bag right there. And I put on something else. And I felt sassy. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go get my stuff done. And I did. Right? It just completely changed my mood and my energy. And it made such a huge difference having something on that I felt good in and confident in instead of doing this little dance. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have a question that's selfish and a question that's for everybody else. Okay. The moms, not <laughs> okay. all of them. Okay, so for me, I've gone through a serious life change. Right. And I um, have 
gone through most of my clothes. I went for about six months-ish without my clothes. I only had my emergency clothes. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm getting like, oh, I, I have my jewelry. I have these pants I haven't worn in a year or so. And now I'm like, okay, how do I think about keeping, I've gotten rid of a third of them probably, organizing it's totally where I'm at, organizing my closet for my new life because sure. I'm no longer corporate. Right. And I'm working for single parent advocate and um, I just thought maybe you might have some so ideas about I, organization. Right, so I really, everybody has a different system, right? But mm -hmm. it really helps me to have things in categories. So I have all my short sleeve shirts together, my long sleeve shirts, mm -hmm. and then I organize them by color. And I take all the dry cleaning hangers, the dry cleaning, if you do dry cleaning, off because you lose things, you forget about them, and, and it traps in moisture, it's not good for the clothes. And this way, if I'm looking for the white t-shirt, or the blue t-shirt, or the print, whatever it is, it's in the spot that I know it's supposed to be in. And if it's not, okay, then maybe it's in the laundry, or the dry cleaners, or, and I put it, because then I know exactly where to look, instead of, okay, wait, let me, let me look, let me keep, let me, you know, it, it takes a lot longer. And then you're going through a huge transition, right? So, a lot of my clients, what I've done is I say, Put the outfit on that you haven't worn maybe in a long time and see how you feel. See if you like it. Does it make you feel good? Does it bring back bad memories? Because a lot of my clients are going through some transition. And then if it doesn't, let go of it. Say, you know what, I'm done. I used this. It was great. It served its purpose. Now maybe I need a new you know, pair of black pants or a blue top or yellow dress, whatever it is, and put it on your list so that when you have the money saved or you know it's going to go on sale, you can go buy it. And some of the pieces, you'll be like, oh yeah, I can still rock this. And some of them, you're like, mm, yeah, not me. And you'll literally feel lighter. I have clients who tell me all the time, I, I tried this, I went through it, and I let go of things, and I feel so much lighter now. Because it's just mental and emotional baggage mm -hmm. that's just sitting there, and you look at it every morning, and you're like, oh, I have nothing to wear. And you're frustrated. Instead of, yes, I can go wear this piece, I'm going to feel great in it. You know, we think we're motivating ourselves, but we're not. It's like, Yep. And then the second question really relates to uh, getting close to the families. Do you have a way or a recommendation for, like our charity, we are virtual. We operate out of two uh, storage units to keep overhead low so we can get more in the hands sure. of the families. Do you know any companies that would help us hang on to clothing donations for the times in between when we get to them, like for instance, if we all decided to do a fashion show or a, right. a donation thing for Mother's Day, we would need to figure out how to store it, transport it, display it, sure. and all of that to get into their hands. I don't, I might see if you could partner with some, you know, like I know Frisco ISD has programs, I know Plano does, I know Hope's Door has a program. Um, Dress for Success Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Dress for Success Dallas. I work with KW. Okay. Yeah. So Dress for Success Dallas takes only women's business wear, yeah. right? Which is great. Um, and then I have the other places because sometimes women, it's not business wear, it's just their normal everyday jeans. They're nice tops, but they're not business wear per se. And I still want them to go someplace where they'll be used and worn. And, you know, they're not things that I would trash. They're, they're still usable and good. So I might see if I can, we could partner with because they do have people who work there, volunteers oh, that work on a regular yeah. on a regular basis. Well, we do that every 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 so often, and I want to do it a lot more because the families really are begging. Yeah, there's and, and I think that's how the Frisco ISD they just created a whole new store, mm -hmm. and it's for kids and parents because there was such a need in the community. Kind of love your list. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Well, also, isn't it true that you can take um, corporate wear? Because I have clothes that corporate, and let me tell you, I haven't been in corporate for over 30 years. But there are jackets that I wore in corporate that went with suits that I now wear with jeans. Mm -hmm. Or I wore with a skirt. So, you know, sometimes when you're going through those clothes, look at them a different way and go, sure. you know, you're not going to wear the jacket and the pants and the, sh the white blouse like you would right. have in corporate. But, but that jacket shoes. would look really cool with a pair of jeans and right. some tennis shoes. Absolutely. And, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So look at it in a different way. Also, I, I, oh, I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to give a shout out. Um, I am wearing black because that's what I wear. Yeah. 
but I tuck things in now. Oh. <laughs> and she did that for me because I covered the menopause and everything. Oh. So just want to say she was zhuzhing me for a while, and now it's like all the way tucked in. So thank you, Elisa. Yeah. And I want to say when I walked in and you walked in, uh, and the scar, you it just the confidence just. You know, it was just there. I saw it. I don't know how yes. you were feeling. Yes. I just want to let you know that. It's just because I wanted you to leave the scar. With me. I feel in this room. <laughs> in this room, I'm in my who I am. Yes. 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 So I walk in confident. Thank you. Here. Right. You showed it. Thank you. Did you have a question? Well, I just had a comment. Um, I, I'm president of the Pierce Colony PTA, and uh, we have a donation bin at the parking lot of the school, and so a lot of y'all are local. Um, not you know not necessarily to spend your really nice soup stuff that could go to their great charity but if you're recycling some things and want it to go to a good cause uh, they they take we're taking you know donations there sure. of clothing since we're getting motivated right. to organize our clothes we're all gonna go home <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, organize our clothes and um, there's a place to take them you know things that you don't need anymore sure. that you don't Absolutely. Wear. thanks for sharing so, yeah. awesome Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me and for 